Despite more than 25 years of efforts to improve water quality in the Chesapeake Bay, most of the bay and its tributaries remain impaired. Researchers are actively monitoring streams and rivers that feed into the bay to get a better handle on where the pollution is coming from. My research focuses on the flow of nitrogen and phosphorus through ecosystems. And this monitoring station is, is one way that we monitor this flow, the flow from the land to the sea. And the instruments in the station are measuring the depth, controlling pumps to take samples, and the samples accumulate in the shed in, in jugs that um, collect composite samples of the water flowing past the station. We measure nitrogen and phosphorus and sediments and, and forms of organic carbon that collect in the sample jugs. Jordan has been monitoring nutrient and sediment pollution on Cirque's property for decades. When a family of beavers moved in around 1990 and created a wetland upstream of his monitoring station, Jordan discovered that wetlands can trap significant amounts of nitrogen and sediments. We had 15 years of data that predated the beavers. And then with the data from the years afterwards, we were able to, to document how much nutrients were taken up by the the wetland created by the beaver dam. And it was a significant amount, maybe 20% or so, of the nitrogen and phosphorus that might have headed towards the bay got stuck in this wetland. Other researchers are also investigating ways to trap nutrients in runoff. Josh McGrath, an assistant professor at the University of Maryland, is developing ways to capture legacy phosphorus that has accumulated in the soils of the bay's eastern shore because of decades of applying poultry litter as fertilizer. CNEN caught up with McGrath in late November at a chicken farm located in Centerville, Maryland on the bay's eastern shore. There he has set up a pilot study to test removal of phosphorus from the farm's runoff using filters containing steel slag. Over the course of one year, the filters have removed about 25% of the phosphorus in the farm's runoff. Although many of the technologies for capturing nutrient and sediment pollution look promising, excessive amounts of pollution are still entering the bay, leading to low levels of dissolved oxygen and dead zones where most species can't survive. Researchers such as Denise Breitberg, a senior scientist at CERC, are studying the effects of low levels of dissolved oxygen on fish, jellyfish, and oysters. Breitberg's group is particularly interested in the effects of temperature and low levels of dissolved oxygen on various bivalves by using several different species of shellfish Oyster restoration could be more beneficial, she says, because various species may filter water at different environmental conditions and different species tolerate different levels of dissolved oxygen. Many people are frustrated by the lack of progress made over the last 25 years to clean up the bay, but researchers are hoping their latest efforts will make a difference.